is Blake from Huntress, and you're listening to MetalStorm.net. campaign you did all of that fundraising and then your fucking bus broke down <laughs> how about that huh? did that set you guys back it's been a hell of a few days that's for sure you know this is the hardest work tour we've ever experienced usually First you time in a nightliner too though right uh, we did nightliners in Europe uh, we get spoiled over there pretty nice um, but this is our first time in the States doing that, and this tour is unbelievable. I mean, you're, you're supposed to have your merch tent set up at 9 a.m. And then you My got, quest is from 8 to 10, but... Yeah, you better get hurry to breakfast, otherwise you're going to miss it, because they're going to pull it at 9.59. And then uh, rush back, get your, the rest of your merch set up, hike your gear from the other side of the planet up to the stage, and then warm up, do your show, hit up, uh, play, go do a signing, do some press, you're busy, and then, it's, oh, you better catch lunch. I'm Actually, my lunch is sitting right there. I haven't had a chance to eat yeah, it. I yet. know, I saw <laughs> Make it to dinner, uh, tear down your merch, get on the bus, and usually you get on the bus, you have two hours to hang out and relax, but in the van, it's been, all right, whose, whose eyelids are the most open because you're driving. Who's driving, right? And then, you know, a couple of these days, I was up from 1.30 in the morning, straight through our set at 1.30 p.m. play. Not till 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock the next night, I just, like, hit the window in the van, and I'm just gone for 10 hours. And Now, did you guys and Battlecross share the van? Or? Yeah, they've, just, those guys are amazing, man. Yeah, I, I talked to Tally earlier for a minute, and he told me, yes, we got the bus back today. Oh, uh, yeah, we got it at it 2 o'clock this morning. It was all fun. And sure enough, I'm the sucker that had to drive the van the rest of the way here while the rest <laughs> are sleeping like little babies. But So, um, as I hear, the Rockstar Mayhem experience has been treating you guys good so far, though? It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, this is a is a whole new market for us. You know, we've we've uh, we we've, we've played such diverse, different tours. We went from Dragon Force's Power Metal and Pagan Fest as, you know, fiddly accordion keyboard kind of symphonic but stuff. But with the and, drinking crew of Teresa's and Alestorm. I love those boys. <laughs> oh man, we became such good buddies with Alestorm. Uh, oh, Danny's a trip. Danny and Chris uh, and oh man, those guys just crack me up. I mean, I. They're just such party animals. I, I think I literally, we did a tour, then we saw them at a metal festival, and uh, oh, oh, this is a hilarious story about Danny, actually. We were halfway through our tour, and uh, he, he's doing a guitar solo, the song finishes, and I'm just fucking with him. I'm like, boo, that was weak from the merch table. And he goes up to the mic, and he's like, hey, everybody. And this is a, a crowd full of 500 people, like, turn around and tell that, that long-haired faggot Blake, fuck. Oh, and so he gets this entire crowd to turn at me and go, fuck you. <laughs> so I managed to get up to on the stage in front of, he's in front of like five or 10,000 people in Lorelei, Germany, and just teabagged his beer right in front of him on stage. So do you think your fan base is stronger overseas in the States, or is it about the same? Uh, you know, we hear a lot, oh, you guys are super European, you're going to make a lot of sense in Europe, and we do great there, and we get treated well, but I think that's, that's a general policy in Europe, they just take care of bands, dinner is served, I mean, this is a European style kind of festival, where they yes. feed you, and they take care of you, and they worry about you, in, in, in Europe, they do the same thing, you show up, you load in, they have a deli tray, they got dinner for you, if you need a place to stay, they put you up, you need power for your RV, they got you, yes. in the States, it's like, yeah. You're off the stage, get the hell out of our club! Yeah. And uh, and especially in like you New York and $10 LA. $10 buyout. Oh, if you're lucky, yeah. you know, and... Uh, but the fans are great, and we, you know, I, I feel like our our, our crowd and, and the way our, our management is so strong here in the United States. Who's your management? Uh, Tent Street management. Oh, and, yeah, okay. And Jackie yeah. Kaiser, Full Medi Jackie. Do, um, Drowning Pool? Yeah, they do yeah. Molly Crew, they do yeah. uh, Papa Roach, a bunch of yeah. giant bands. And so they're really good for us here in the States and our label is from Austria. So we have this kind of Napalm, global Napalm, thing Napalm, going. Napalm. Napalm Records, they're amazing. And uh, so we have such a, like a spread out diverse fan base. Everywhere we go, there's those 10 or 15 diehards, you know? And, and we were joking with this band we were on tour with. Um, they're this German glam metal band called Kiss and Dynamite. Uh, we were on tour with them in Dragon Force and in Germany, 
it was insane. And as far as you go with your Facebooks and your likes and your record sales or whatever, we were just at the same place. But their whole fan base was just centralized right there in the Germany, Austria, Switzerland area. Right. So when they were there, it was unbelievable for them. Yeah. And we really realized, wow, like, we're just so, so spread out, you know, that we're really in a few, in a few years when, when we've really developed our fan base and that is equivalent all over the world. We're just, we're set up and it's going to be great. Well, speaking of fan base, do you think Lemmy writing a song for you kind of helped your street cred? Yeah, cred is, cred is the word for it, you know, and I mean, he's, he's amazing. And the, and the fact that he came up with that song title, I mean, Jill comes up to us and she's like, uh, I've been texting with Lemmy and he's gonna write a song for us. And we're like, yeah, that's not gonna right. happen. Get out of here. And then and then a couple weeks later, I'm hanging out with her and she gets a text and he's like, oh yeah, I finished the lyrics, they're actually quite good. <laughs> and we're like, no way. He's like, oh, it's called, I wanna fuck you to death. <laughs> had a single swear word on our first record and the rest of the record doesn't swear. We're not like, you know, don't fuck with us. We're real tough guys. We're gonna beat your ass or nothing. You know, it's like, it, we, we're cl we like to keep it classy. So when we got that proposition, we're like, whoa. Well, you know what? The only person that can write those lyrics is Lenny and the only person that can sing it is a female singer. Right. So let's do it. It was awesome. Um, you were in a professor yeah. and then when Jill I guess found you or moved to LA or whatnot ever um, why did you guys change your name to Huntress then when Jill joined? Um, well you know she had a project already going called Huntress she had these two cute little demos they kind of sounded like a diet Iron Maiden uh, real light riffs but her melodies were amazing and her vocal performance was stellar and at the time, we thought we were gonna keep both bands. You know, we're like, all right, we're gonna do our cute Disney metal thing over here uh, and have fun with that, but but keep it simple and, and keep it Jill's vision. And then we'll have our, let's just smoke grass and do all the riffs we wanna do and really get our, get you know, get our rocks off in Professor. And then when it turned out, we were writing the songs and getting our rocks off in Huntress. We were like, well, let's focus, you know? And, and, it, and it just, you know, Huntress is, a, is the perfect vision. She, she, she knows the lyrical content. She knows the image. She knows, she knows where it's going. And, you know, when we got the team up, it was just, it was, it was just the right match, you know? So, so with Jill and her vision of the, you know, triple goddess, you know, that is her vision then for the band? Yeah, you know, uh, the rest of the band isn't particularly religious. and, and I I wouldn't call that religious. She's, like she, you know, pagan or yeah, whatever, she, you know. Yeah, she, you know, she, she has her, her pagan ways, and I, and and my my knowledge base of that is relatively limited. I mean, she's opened all of our minds to it a lot, and uh, the power that she summons and the things that she seems to make happen create a lot of faith in all of us that we would have never believed in. But it's like, look where we are, you know, and uh, it's it's pretty incredible, you know. So, who are the main songwriters then in Huntress? Um, I mean, it is it is a sincere collaborative effort you know uh, we really bring we bring the riffs and the songs to the table but her melodies and her vocal uh, ideas and her lyrical content she's in control of that we really kind of bring the song base and we're like these riffs are cool and and we're like we picture you singing here and here and here and she's like well that's too long let's stretch this out a little bit and then we go back and forth and, and it you know it just comes together yeah okay cat is out of the bag you guys gonna do the tour with dancing yeah um, is that something you want to scratch off your bucket list? Was that like... Oh, it's, it's up there. <laughs> you know, actually, you know, I, this, this is the kind of thing that, that, that really blows our minds is Jill has this very powerful vision and, and, and that there's something she wants. She, she makes it clear and she dedicates herself to it. And there was a list of bands. You know, she's like, I want to tour with these bands. And she put them on the wall. Dancing was on that list. And, and it's, it's just unbelievable. And I mean... I was just joking with the, our, you know, our drummer Carl, and I was, I was telling a previous interview. <laughs> we're both laying in this van, bumping around, half asleep, just wishing we were in our bus. And he leans over to me, he's like, "Dancing, dude, <laughs> dancing." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> it still hasn't settled in. It's just unbelievable. Um, you are originally from California. Yep, born and raised. Highland. Uh, Highland Park. I lived there for a long time. I'm from the Pasadena area in general. It's all over there. Okay. Um, question of the day, if you would be in one band, guest musician for one day, who, why, and in what capacity? 
okay, am I able to play as good as the dudes that are in that band? Am I magically sure, yes. granted awesome powers? Yes, you are. I would just shred with Uli Roth in Scorpions era days. When he was back in those early Scorpions records, those first four records. Unbelievable. I'd be like, dude, channel me your brains and let's shred. That would, that would be my dream. Um, Dodgers or Angels? Dodgers. <laughs> Los Angeles. Okay, what's Doyers? Next? That's what we call them in Highland Park. It's the Doyers. Okay. Doyers for life. Uh, what's next for Huntress after this and of course after the dance tour? Um, a lot more touring that I can't say out loud before I'll be hung. But it's the tour of the fall in the States is coming up in uh, October and November. And it's it's a doozy. It's, gonna... and we're, we get to we have the honor of being first of four on this tour that's coming up, and it's it's unreal. Last word to your fans. I love you. Thanks for keeping us alive. You guys are the best.